So again, when a switch boots up, it doesn't know where devices are in the topology. It has to learn where they are. Or you've got to configure the switch statically with MAC addresses. Switch is booted up, doesn't know where anyone is in the topology. At the moment on PC1, it's configured with this IP address, but notice the ARP cache is empty. It doesn't know the MAC address of PC2. So if I send a ping to PC2 now, using simulation mode, what you'll notice is the PC sends an ARP message into the network so that it can learn where PC2 is. Again, at this point, the switch only knows where PC1 is. When PC2 replies, the packet is forwarded to PC1 only. Because the switch knows where PC1 is, but also now knows where PC2 is, so all subsequent packets are sent only between PC1 and PC2. If I clear the MAC address table, that process will happen again. So show MAC address table. If for example, PC3 pings PC4, it has to send an op message into the network to learn where PC4 is. So it's sending a broadcast from itself looking for the MAC address of PC4. So the same process will apply here. Packet is flooded, but the ARP packet is dropped by PC1 and PC2. Only PC4 will reply to the ARP packet, and now ICMP messages are sent directly between those two devices. MAC address table at this point only contains PC3 and PC4 because I previously cleared the MAC address table. If other devices send traffic, such as PC1, the MAC address will be learnt. So as an example, I'll send some traffic from PC2 to PC1. That packet is sent to PC1, but at this point now, the MAC address table is populated. So once the MAC address table is populated, if a device such as PC2 wants to ping PC4, the traffic will only go between those two devices. But notice here, PC2 doesn't know the MAC address of PC4, so it has to send an op into the network first. And I should have done that with simulation mode. So what I'll do is clear the op cache to force that process again. Op cache is empty now. So if PC2 pings PC4, it's going to have to send a broadcast into the network, in other words, an ARP message requesting the MAC address of PC4. And now ICMP messages are sent directly between those two devices. So if the MAC address table is fully populated and these devices know each other's MAC addresses, so in other words, their ARP caches are populated, ICMP traffic or any other traffic sent between these two devices is sent directly between them. The traffic is not flooded by the switch. ICMP messages or other traffic is sent directly between the two devices in the conversation. So PC2 can ping PC4, and if I start a ping on PC1 to PC3, what you'll notice is those ICMP messages go directly from PC1 to PC3, and ICMP messages from PC2 to PC4 go directly between those two devices. So start another ICMP ping, direct messages between PC4 and PC2. 
direct messages between PC1 and PC3. ICMP messages are not flooded in this case because the switch knows where the destination MAC addresses are. But at this point, if I clear the MAC address table so that it's empty, notice this ICMP reply, which is a unicast, will now be flooded because the switch doesn't know where that device is. Notice here as well, ICMP message from PC1 to PC3. PC1 is pinging PC3. It's a unicast frame. From PC1 to PC3, notice it's flooded because the switch doesn't know where PC3 is at this point. Once it's learnt where PC3 is, now the traffic will not be flooded. So there's PC2, PC4. Notice the ICMP message from PC1 is sent directly to PC3 and from PC3 directly to PC1. So to make that clear again, if these devices know about each other's MAC addresses, so PC1 knows about PC3, PC3 knows the MAC address of PC1. But the switch doesn't know about that MAC address in its MAC address table. The traffic will be flooded. So again, if PC1 pings PC3, I should have done that in simulation mode. So go back to simulation mode and let's clear the MAC address table. Do that ping again. Here's the ping packet. When it hits the switch, notice it's flooded. Even though this is a unicast packet destined for PC3, because the switch doesn't know where PC3 is, it only knows where PC1 is, the packet is flooded. Unicast frames to unknown destinations are flooded by a switch. If the switch doesn't know where the destination MAC address is, it will flood the frame out of all ports except the port on which it was received. Only once it's learnt where the destination of the frame is, is the frame forwarded only out of the relevant port, as we can see here. So the ICMP messages are sent directly between PC1 and PC3. But if PC2 sends a ping to PC4, that's going to be flooded because the MAC address of PC4 is not in the MAC address table. So notice the green packet. It's going to a unicast MAC address, but it's flooded because the switch doesn't know where PC4 is in the topology. So I'm hoping that helps you understand how MAC addresses work and how flooding works on a layer two switch. Packets to broadcasts, unknown unicasts and multicasts, or what is called bum traffic, is flooded by a layer two switch. Now, if you wanna try this yourself, download the attached packet tracer file and try different scenarios. The best way to learn is to simply try things in packet tracer and look at how traffic flows through the network.